Well, they well, are. The cheers are whacking around. He's got a tremendous amount of supporters here from Darley Down, the whole of Derbyshire. He's given them a century. He's pulled it back just a little bit. He has to save this match several times. This man just wants one frame. He'll be the first player to have won the title after making a maximum break. Just another record he's creating. On each occasion that the 147 has been made, there was Cliff Thorburn and Jimmy White, of course, in the World Championship. They were both defeated. It looks as if there's a gap through to the red. Stephen didn't intend to bring the red down the table with the cue ball. Uh, first chance to Nigel. One. already up looking at the two reds around the black but it's uh, just a little bit congested there just touched the red prior to the Six. black there so Mike is now free, but I'm not too sure about uh, where it would respot. Yeah. <laughs> Nigel Bond starting to buzz. Seven. Nigel Bond. Four and a miss. Well, I don't Nine think it would be the pressure, Ted, would it? He only needs one frame, but uh, it just shows that century that Nigel made there. He's just uh, stopped Stephen in his tracks for the time being, anyway. Short again. Well, four and a miss. Nigel Bond. I think that's what Stephen was frightened of doing, just slipping past the Reds when making contact with them, and uh, he's left this one on for Nigel. One. I'm just wondering if Nigel's thinking about last year when he played Cliff Thorburn. Uh, he was 9-2 down and came back and won the match. Ten frames to nine. If he keeps that in his mind, it'll help his cause. Seven. 
seven. A bit short there. Yes, another crowd pleaser there. This is a nasty little shot. Well, he's played it in such a way as uh, the white's finished on the side cushion as well, so he did hesitate a little bit. Might have been better just getting down the first time and uh, knocking it in, but uh, not an easy pot for Stephen. Cubal on the side cushion like that, you've got to cue so well to pop those. a nice little nudge to knock the red put it on for the middle pocket and leave himself perfectly on one into the right corner yes Dennis that was the one difficult red on the table he's had five shots so far in this break could it be the start of something big 22 John Street once again cleans the cue ball. This is his last final. I wonder will that be the last time that John Street cleans the white ball? This black to go into the lead. Thirty. Does he sense? Thirty one. The writing on the wall. Thirty eight. Thirty nine. <coughs> to win this embassy title this year would be the fourth consecutive occasion yet another record in the book of Stephen Henry 44 yes. well, once again the white ball being cleaned
That's what it's all about. That and a hundred and ninety thousand pounds. Forty-five. I don't think the money means that much to Stephen Hendry, Ted. He just loves to win snooker titles. He was born to be a champion. Twenty-four points ahead now. Fifty-three. There's a few young pretenders around for the title of Embassy World Champion. There's John Higgins, there's Ronnie O'Sullivan, but this is the gentleman they're going to have to beat. The Midas touch. Sixty-one. Sixty-eight. Nigel is a sad face, but he's really a satisfied young man, as I said before. Sixty-nine. He's made this final for the first time. And he knows he's got a check coming. His biggest paycheck so far in snooker, £115,000. But the championship itself obviously belongs 76. to this young Scots Supremo. 78. He's going to do it in style, Ted. Could he win his final frame with a century break? Pure class. 81. Eighty-five. Eighteen frames to nine will be the result. Nineteen. Twenty-six-year-old Stephen Henry preparing to marry his childhood sweetheart Mandy this coming summer. But in the meantime, takes the Embassy World Snooker title for the fifth time and a record four times consecutively. A fabulous performance. Ladies and gentlemen, still Embassy Champion of the World, Stephen Henry. And the man who challenged so well, full of admiration, for Nigel Bond. Stephen, many congratulations. Thank you. Feeling good? No, terrible. <laughs> Can I talk to Nigel first? Nigel, um, you had a mountain to climb tonight, uh, but I think the crowd here and all the millions watching at home have admired you for the way you refused to give in, you went out, you got one back and everything else. Uh, I know son Matthew is out in the dressing room. When he's old enough to read the record books, he's going to be proud of his dad, isn't he? Yeah, that's right. Uh, thanks very much. Um, I lost it in the second session, really. Stephen, I missed just a couple, two or three easy balls, and, and Stephen really punished me for it. And, you know, you can't afford to miss balls against him. You know, it's too good. But it's been a wonderful championship for you. Pulled oh, out it's, a wonderful yeah, victory. it's been superb. You know, um, when I came here, I was just wanted to get through my first match, really, and... You know, I got through that and then started to play the snooker that I'm capable of. Um, so it's been great. You don't show many expressions when you're out here. Yeah. 
miserable sons of Hey, what? For miserable sons of But were you nervous? Were you twitching? Were you thinking? Um, I felt all right before, you know, the start of the match. I started off well. I uh, won the first session 4-3. Um, but like the second session, I, I did start to, uh, twitched a bit, you know, a few times. But you still had a crack and you got a century. Yeah, that's right. It was nice to make a century tonight. Mm. Well done. Stay with me. Stephen, um, was it four on the trot, another record? Are there any records left now? Um, was it 51, 52 centuries? I can't think of them anymore. No, no. Um, it's, uh, I, I, I can't yeah. talk just now. It's, yeah. uh, it's, it's a great, um, obviously I'm delighted to be world champion against mm. the biggest event in the year. Mm. How do you rate the match? Along? I mean, you had a, a bit of a bad start. You had you at the beginning, didn't you? Nigel played very, looked very sharp in the beginning, certainly sharper than I did. Uh, but obviously last night I played superbly well. Uh, I didn't miss and Nigel should have gone six four up, m missed a pink in the middle and from then on uh, I don't like what remind him like <laughs> but uh, I, I, well, after that yeah, after that I played very well and uh, as I say a, a six frame lead was a lot to take into the day. Mm. All the centuries and everything else, tremendously well done, a great match and still a great champion. <laughs> Come forward this way with me because just about there, because it's the important time now, because it's what I always call wages time. A little bit of a cash register in Totling. And will you welcome the presentation party, the sales and marketing director of Imperial Tobacco, Mr. Peter Middleton, the chairman of WSA, John Spencer, calling Mr. Peter Dyke of World Promotion. So, as is traditional, first of all, the check for the runner-up, and uh, that is £115,000. Big money. <laughs> For getting the top break of the tournament, first of all, a little matter of £16,000, Stephen Hendrick. <laughs> Added to that, because, and you must have been on the moon if you didn't know, uh, the maximum, only the third in crucible history, so a bonus of 147,000. <laughs> and then there's a little matter, because you are now the 1995 Embassy Champion of the World, £190,000. <laughs> but you see, what he's desperate to get his hands on, the checks are gone in the pocket. What he really wants is the famous old trophy. And Embassy Champion of the World, 1995, four years in a row. First, a young man with a lovely all-round game that has stood firm these past 17 days of world championship pressure, and he can remember with pride his performances in defeating Steve Lee, Alan McManus, and Andy Hicks to give him a place in this year's Embassy World Final. With a mountain to climb this evening, will you welcome, please, this very talented young man from Darley Dale, Nigel Bond.
ladies and gentlemen, his unbelievable opponent who has once again broken record after record in his relentless pursuit of a fifth world title and the teenage phenomenon I used to call the Wonder Bairn, now 26 years of age, has emerged into the greatest player the snooker has ever produced. In defense of his coveted title, will you welcome please the touch and the talent of the world number one and reigning world champion, Stephen Hendry.